Hello and welcome. My name is Dan, and here I am in the driver's seat for once. Who would have expected that? From room? I certainly didn't. <laughs> Definitely. Nobody here, they just like showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a call. Right. I came. Yeah. We're going to have a uh, explainer catch-up video, um, and we're going to explain why James might not be on many future videos uh, based on some of his persona choices. <laughs> <laughs> expect that later. Okay. It's okay. I didn't date Anne, so I'm not trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey! Uh, All right. <laughs> so today we're going to be playing a game called Monster Gourmet, Fantastic Beasts, and How to Eat Them. <laughs> we, can we didn't hear that one yet. That's good. Are going to get sued? We're going to get sued, but that's right. fine. I'll put it in. No, it falls under parody. <laughs> that's right. I'll take the risk. All right. Uh, Disney, we love you. Blind King is like my favorite movie. Um, but anyway... <laughs> Does that's, it's like the, no, it's no, Universal. It's oh, Universal. No. What? Oh, Universal. we're fucked. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they are definitely suing us now. <laughs> we're going to have to scamander so out of here. So we're just going to restart Mickey this thing. We're playing hey. Fantastic Beasts. I, mean, I, I had to force it in there somehow. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Today we're playing Monster Gourmet. The system we'll be using, finally, by popular demand, and also because we like, sort of felt like it, um, is D&D 5th Edition. We are actually playing Dungeons and Dragons on this Dungeons and Dragons channel. It's happening. It's going to be some sick shit. Buy one from your local bookstore. <laughs> or Amazon. No. No. <laughs> so, we don't need any more glass, giant glass balls in this city. <laughs> no, that's, it's the architecture of the future. And that's why going to be known We have to construct the Thunderdomes now, so when the apocalypse hits, we're ready for that it. That is a very good point. When, when Luke came back, he's like, I want to see Bezos' balls. And then we just started chanting it on the back of the bus. Bezos' balls. Bezos' balls. Bezos' balls. Okay. So... Sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, Dan. Monster Gourmet? No, that's that's why we're doing this now. I guess. Get it out of our system. Yeah, I just get it out of the system. We haven't, we haven't sat down together for a long time. No, it's like it's the, good. the roles have been reversed, so I'm just like, I know what team, I'm doing, team, and I yeah. need it. Yeah. 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 Team. Okay, so Monster Gourmet uh, takes place in and around the town of Edderby's Arch, and it stars a monster hunter's guild, which is uh, these people. So, the first question I have for you all, and you might don't have to answer it right now, but what is the name of your monster hunting guild? Oh. So you say ours, like, are we big deals in it, or are we just... So, the way like a things are person. set up... So, Ederby's Arch <clears throat> is nominally, at least, part of the Kingdom of Earl. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, like, way far, like, to the west and over the mountains, and, like, nobody's seen soldier or tax collector or any sort of support or hindrance from the Kingdom of Earl in many and many a year, like generations. Mm -hmm. um, We're in the roughs. And so you're sort of like a little bit of tradition and a little bit kept up out of necessity. Um, it's sort of known that like there are some serious monsters around Ederby's Arch and that <clears> there's <throat> a serious monster hunters guild around Ederby's Arch. Um, so, you know, people, people flock in. Um, so, there are probably, like, a few NPCs in the guild, just, like, if none of you is the chef, then there'll be a chef, and, you know, whatever else. Um, you know, maybe you have a bookkeeper or something like that. Uh, but you all are the adventuring party. You're the ones who go out and okay. actually do the so work. So we're, 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 we're kind of a big deal. Like, we're it, though? You're we're it. it. Oh, we're wow. it. There, are, okay. there wow. is no B team. I oh, think wow. we should be called, like, a, a party number something because a bunch of people before people us died. Just died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it, it's not even like anything. It's just like we should, party number fifty two. We, we should call ourselves the F team. Cause that many people have died. <laughs> no, they've already gone through the whole outfit. It's like F two now. Yeah. F two team. <laughs> we should yeah, we we could have like a like a cool name like Omega Six, but it's actually a really low designation. <laughs> yeah. No, one thing I was curious about is how long did everyone else kind of envision them already being here? Not very long. My thought was I had recently arrived, okay. but I'm fine with messing with that if that's not the case. So you all, or at least my thought, and this doesn't have to apply to everybody. That could be like a rookie on the team. Mm -hmm. It's always a fun role to play. Um, but my thought was that everybody has like sort of knows each other, have at least gone on a couple of missions together. Sure. Like y'all have been working together for a decent amount of time. I will gladly play the newbie who is not respected at all. <laughs> <laughs> that that's great, or maybe respected. I don't know. Sure. But... Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, I don't know. What do you guys want to call it? Hmm. And we can we can listen to character introductions first, and then make a decision. Okay. Like have it run in the back of your head. 
So here in Ederby's Arch, fighting monsters and then eventually eating them, um, we'll start to my, whatever direction this is, left with James. So uh, my name is Luther Mossgrove. I'm playing a fifth level rogue. Uh, and uh, the what idea behind uh, Luther is that he has a lot of uh, family obligations to fulfill here in mm. Ederby's Arch that directly involve hunting monsters. We'll hopefully figure out more about those later. But uh, Luther's a very confident guy. Um, he's not exactly the most fiery of a person. He's more reserved. Uh, yeah, so he's not hes not the most out there guy. You know, he, he likes to sit back and plan, and I think that's going to be somewhat contradictory <laughs> <laughs> to the rest of the members of my party. Well, you are the new guy, so. I know. So anyway. Uh, that's not really how we do it around here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Luther, 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 we gotta talk about this. What's one. the plan? What's the one? Uh, uh, there's the one. In, our, in our experience, when you plan, you just kinda die. So, <laughs> uh, so I took a sage background because I'm basing my character off the idea that he has a lot of knowledge about monsters, so I have every knowledge skill in the game available to me. Mm. Um, thank you, half-elf skill boost. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so personality trait, I'm careful and precise. Rushing into things gets you killed. Uh, ideals, know your enemy, strike first, strike fast. Bonds are the family comes before or else, and Igshil will pay for what he's done. And uh, flaws, I'm more confident than everybody here. Mm. Whoa. All right. Didn't what do you look didn't like? Didn't know we were filling ah. out the personality part. <laughs> Dude, you got it. <laughs> How are you going to get inspiration, Logan? That's a, that's, a, that's a fair point. See, every other 5e game, which I'm suddenly in 3 now, has not done this. No, we so. did that in Daniel's game. At least, we did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that may, this, is also, this is still true. Okay. So, James, what do you look like? Yeah, uh, so Luther is um, rather plain looking. He's got uh, black hair that he likes to sweep back. So his forehead is firmly on display most of the time. Is it like grease back or like in a ponytail? No, or? it's 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 grease back. Uh, he probably uses like some sort of monster gut grease to do that. Um, there, uh, it doesn't have a scent though because that would be stupid. Tulips, um, there, uh, what was I gonna say? He's not like he's not a very noticeable person. He's a half elf, so maybe that will garner some response. But other than that, he tries his best to stay out of people's way. Unless he needs to interact with them. He looks like Adam Driver. Ooh, it doesn't nice. look like Adam Driver will. So Logan, what's my timer look like on the microwave? Oh, he looks like um he looks like Mads Mikkelsen. Like a younger like a, okay. what's how do you say that guy's we name? Should, that is correct. Unless right? okay. you all want to do the rest of your introductions while I mash potatoes, we should pause here. Okay. You might have questions, so Yeah. What if you just yell? And at also mashing potatoes can be like lots of swearing. Pause! Okay, cool. So, James, your character is very exciting. Well, actually, he's, he's sort of in potentially not all that exciting. I think he'll be... Wow. Thanks, <laughs> man. He's like... Smooth like alert. He's love to start the day with a nice chiding from your DM about how your character's fucking boring. No, I didn't say he's boring. So I your character's like, a he's interesting... A right, right, right. Very interesting, except not really. Um... <laughs> I'm excited for him. Okay. I love him. We love him. He's he's exciting but not excited. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's catchy but not pushy. Okay. Um, Dan, you know that new character you wanted? <laughs> well, listen to this. <laughs> you want an exciting character? I'll give you an exciting character. Okay. Um. So my character is named uh, Vea. Um, and she is a cleric, um, and I took the Outlander background, um, I guess it just make more sense for me to just talk about the characters, like, talking about the sheet. Okay, so I am known in the town, uh, for my strange religion, which involves eating things to, uh, gain more power to eventually face God and eat God and become God. Um, so it's very strange to people. It kind of scares them. There are rumors that I, I may have eaten people. Um, and uh, in appearance, I am also strange. In appearance, I uh, have very tan skin from being out in the desert all the time. Um, I oftentimes have a, a 
big cloth completely from the top of my head, like down to here, just mm. like facing in front, like Ooh. a veil. Um, yes, style. And uh, kind of like wear sort of like deserty outlander kind of armor and stuff like that. What is your class? Cleric. Okay, sweet. Yep. Which, uh, which kind of cleric? Life, actually. Cool. Because it's the most useful. Yeah, <laughs> because if you consume life constantly, you can give it out freely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it you got makes life sense. to spare. See, I'm not evil. I just eat things. I mean, evil people make great type of evil. So no. yeah. All right. So yeah, I guess like I guess like all of that doesn't really matter in case what, it comes up for sure. Okay. Great inspiration. Perfect. <clears throat> uh, so Thea the cleric. Yeah, Thea. Thea with a V. V e h y a. You have the whole full name though. No, that just means that I follow the god. Oh, what what's your what's the god's name? Yadal. Yadal. Okay. Yadal. Is that like effectively Yadal. your last name? Kinda, but it's like it's not worth mentioning. It's kind of like because like it's, unless it's you Vaya. know it, it doesn't. No one's gonna be like. Is it like that? translated like well, Vea, a follower of Yadal? No, it means no, I yet. am Yadal. Oh, everyone is That's Yadal awesome. <laughs> until there actually are, and then they can change the name of Yadal if they want to. Notes for gotcha. post. Yeah, but like who do that? So is. I have a question. No, really is it apparent in your religious texts and stuff how many Yadals there have been to this point? Like, has anybody oh, actually yeah. ascended yet? Oh, yeah. No, it's been recorded and stuff like that. Okay. Um, the current one is pretty modern. Um, but it's, it's, it's it, in newer forms of the religion, they don't really, like, focus on that as much as, uh, as like, oh, you do things and you're given power by this god, as opposed to, oh, you're supposed to try to become god. Okay. So Yedal was the original name of the very first one, and so since there've mm. all been iterations of it since, and you can't really ask like, "What's your name?" It's kind of like they just go with that. But it definitely works, right? This isn't this isn't a false religion. It definitely works. What's a false religion and what's not, James? Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. There, I don't know how to actually, answer that question. No, I mean, I'm just asking if this <laughs> this whole like. <laughs> I'm asking if this whole like eating things to gain their strength and like becoming God is actually. Well, I didn't that make happens. up. This, I didn't make up this whole religion for no reason. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know if that's how you were running well, it. It could very. It could very much be like just like. Uh, I yes. Don't know if you're setting yourself for a tragic arc. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, I, I'm. I'm giving you a hard time. Yes. So, to the best of my character's knowledge, and if you allow it, that is the fiction. There is some like deific creature named Yishtal. Mm. Yes. Yedal. Yedal. Now here's my Yishtal question. Is fine. I don't care. Is is, so, is, is Yadol like a second person reference to it? And like, if it was first person, it'd be my doll. Good question. <laughs> That's a really good question. Fuck you. <laughs> is there is there a Yadol conference where they're like, and uh, Steve has eaten Yadol, so everyone congrats <laughs> to Steve. We got a new Yadol. Um, and uh, Barb's having a birthday, so <laughs> go forth, my new son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Barb, enjoy the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Hey, I thought it's the funny guy was your, your here. Sorry, sorry. I'm going no, back to my good. hole. That was good. It's made of your children. Yeah. She's like, ooh. No. No, but I, but I purposely do not target things that are weaker than me. Purposely only target things that are stronger. Do you protect things that are weaker than you? Or are you kind of like, to. you should work hard and get strong on your own there? If I want to, okay. I will. Right. I have no Isn't obligation like, to, like, though. Yeah, licking your lips. Isn't anything you defeat, by definition, weaker than you? Yes, but if you assume something is weaker than you, it's kind of like not like worth your time. Yeah, I was gonna say, is, is it diminishing is it, returns? It's like why is it worth the risk? You know, it, you could fuck up, you could get killed. Also, it's just like you look like an asshole. Placed <laughs> <laughs> among the adult. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am getting a picture of like the of the bureaucrat. Do you have? It's just a poor form to eat. Do you, All right. Do you have your do's and your don'ts? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Logan. <laughs> Logan has a Um <clears throat> It has over the head limit. My name is um <laughs> bup, 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 bup. My name is uh Nash Wolfhorn. Um <laughs> That's not even the funny part. <laughs> um, um level five barbarian and um Nash kind of I th I think um is known in the area for having kind of like a tragic story. Um, his family was like um, a uh, a small like it was like a nuclear family. He was like the only child. Um, uh, there were nomads and and like herders. And um, one fateful night, um, Dan, let me know if I'm I'm saying too much or not too much, but um, if it's none of this makes anything that doesn't make sense. Um, he uh, 
and his family um, made camp and um, he witnessed his parents get eaten by a horrific presence or at least what he thinks <gasps> he thinks that they were eaten oh. um, can I say that it is the, yeah you can say that it, 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 by a beholder oh. mm. wait it ate them? Um, or at least he thinks he was cowering and hiding and he's the only one who escaped this, this this terrible attack or something. It came and then they weren't there. Exactly. Oh, that'd be really interesting <clears throat> if it ate them. I was, I was, no, I, I know I was looking it. it up and I was like, did the Tony eat there, no? Well, so in the, in the D&D like canon canon, they're xenophobic. <laughs> so like they would hate to eat something that's like... Oh. I don't know. Anyway. Nash doesn't yeah, they know that. Hurled, <laughs> they just like yelled yeah, slurs at your really parents until they ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like the beholder eats his parents and he eats the beholder. No, that's fine. Like maybe in this, like exactly. they, it did eat them. Ooh, just, maybe a beholder just, is my dog. We're going to get along. We, we're, we've got maybe. I don't know. I don't know what roots. it looks like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway. She, who knows? Nash was um, literally, literally um, somewhat literally raised by wolves at that point. He um, was a very young boy. And, um, or, and, um, Dan, kind of answering more of the questions you had outstanding, um, kind of like taken in, like once once he like ran away in the night and kept running across the desert, um, found like a, like more hunters and nomads and was raised in like their kind of kind of as like kind of like a if you can keep up, boy, like you mm. can learn our trade, and um, became a hunter and like started to respect um, the um, creatures um, and and the wolves especially. I lost all the things that I wrote down. Bummer. Rip. Um, but um, his guiding principles are basically um, like he is just kind of kind of wolfish in that regard. He is he is a like totem warrior, so he has he's a hairy boy. Um, yeah, he's kind of kind of a little hairy, kind of not exactly just kind of a long face and very wolf like eyes, and wears um, uh, this trophy of this like pelt of either a wolf or a dire wolf, whatever makes more sense, that um, he kind of um, vested in kind of like a nature, like um, in kind of like a um, like alpha male fashion, and it's kind of coming over his head and it wears the pelt kind of as, as the shawl, and it's covered in um, his arms and legs are mostly covered in like these bandages, these wrappings, and. Um, yeah, I th- I think I think would be known in the area for being kind of like a trader, like living off of his selling of pelts and trader. things. <clears throat> yeah, trader, trader, um, and um, that's how he kind of got involved with the monster guild. Do you have an outlander background as well? That's correct. We okay. got three of them. Everybody's an outlander except for three. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's like only one person. Full of four hunting monsters. Right? Well, but only one person needs it for the wanderer feature. Like that's the only reason you take outlander. Sorry, we like making characters, James, and not like pieces in like a. Puzzle. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just talking about team synergy. I know. Yeah, yeah, pretty right. synergistic. No, though. They'll, be yeah. fine. they'll be fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, like a dude. Well, yeah, he's, he's kind of he's kind of a weird a weird mixture of like um, stoic, but also like wolf pup toddler, like in in, in a room, you know. Um, you just gotta smell things. Maybe. You smell raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, Logan. Okay, you gotta get this. Well, I do. I like that. Damn, I'm gonna steal that. You have to get in here at some point. <laughs> I smell fear. <laughs> Ooh, fear. You pee, you pee, you pee yourself. <laughs> you smell fear. Right. So, so yeah. well, so what has brought you to the guild? Um, to well, for, as, as Dan kind of mentioned, my desire to get back at this beholder and eat it. And and to grow stronger through. Oh and, yeah, know, I'm just here to eat things. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of aligns. Um, I like your style. <laughs> I have I don't have I don't have the same kind of fascination with like growing stronger, but I I have been raised in the wild and kind of understand like that's what you do, right? Like you hunt things and, mm-hmm. and yeah, you, don't have these skills you don't necessarily you don't necessarily have a greater purpose for it. Besides besides to get back at this beholder. That's that's one of that's one of the things, and I and, and it's it's a mixture of that and the respect for like the hunter prey relationship. Mm-hmm. I think so. One might say you're getting a taste for it. Mm. Damn, James, coming kind of with, with good, right. with good, good quips that's, that's from my character. Uh, James is James. You know what it feels like to be on the other side of the table. Now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't feel bad. All right. Hi. So I'm Zach. My character's name is Lindsay Pipkins. He is a sorcerer. He's a half elf. He's also an outlander. You're half elf too. Yeah, half elf. So I'm a human. Sorry, I'm a human. I said. Before I describe what he looks like, 
I need to say why he looks that way. So, Lindsay, like Logan's character, was in a very small, not nomadic, but small village full of elves and humans and half-elves. And one day, well, so in the region, there's all these crazy, scary monsters. And in his area particularly was the phoenix. And so the phoenix in its reign of terror burned down the village in its entirety. And everyone died. They all burned to death except for Lenzi. And the traumatic experience awoken his draconic bloodline and gave him his sorcerer powers. So he has joined the guild to avenge his clan and take down the phoenix. He'll fight fire with fire if he has to. <laughs> yeah. What what was that? You got it. You got to show the the guild. Oh, the, this the guy the halfling, the, the, the halfling from the guild artist on page in yeah. the player's handbook. And so, <laughs> Lindsay wears very long red robes. He really embraces the fire motif. Um, he has no hair at all. It was Burn all it burned off. off. <laughs> it was all burned off. So he's Wait, everywhere. Everywhere. So he, he's, <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah, he's bald. Eyelashes. He has no eyebrows, no eyelashes, completely hairless. But. When he wants to be intimidating, or he's really playing up the fire, he will use See? prestidigitation to nice. make fiery eyebrows yes. and a long, oh, flowing so cool. hair of fire. Was, he's 16 oh. years old. He's brash. <laughs> he's a hothead, basically. He's overcompensating. Exactly. He, he's lost his family. He has nobody except for you guys now. And he's just Man, trying to find his way. it sucks to be a bald 16-year-old. So he's a little insecure. No, this is and this, he's, this isn't like balding. This is like chrome dome. Yeah, like, no, but you still, it all off. This is you look it all. to look like to look like a teenage baby this is, is like not your, fun. This is like <laughs> prepackaged. This like is human. our second campaign in a row with like a young hairless person. <laughs> what the fuck? We, we have we have a thing for young nubile men here at tabletop. Wait, Top. did nine swords have a no? no. Um, uh, no, not not blades. Uh, oh yeah, blades blades did yeah. James Lee. James Lee. Oh, that, yeah. This is actually our third campaign then, because he was a young, nubile, hairless alien in. in oh the- yeah, in Boyband. <laughs> <then. laughs> yeah. It's a common theme. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, oh, <laughs> and since uh, you you said them, I'll read mine. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. My, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. My personality trait is I place no stock in wealthy or well-mannered folk. Money and manners won't save you from a hungry owl bear. His ideal, glory. I must earn glory in battle for myself and for my clan or lack thereof. His bond. I am the last of my tribe and it is up to me to ensure their names enter legend. And his flaw, violence is my answer to almost any challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, we gotta go. I, I just want to hear what were, what were your two uh, personality traits through flaws? I didn't realize you could write stuff yourself. But... Oh. oh no, that's, those are from... Yeah, those are. I, I wrote stuff yeah, no, myself. I, his are original. I um, just used the book ones. Um, I think personality traits. It says I have a lesson for every situation. Drawing from Zerdy Nature. I just picked that one because it made the most sense. I don't necessarily going to follow that. Um, okay. uh, ideals might. Uh, the strongest are meant to rule. That makes pretty obvious sense. Um, bond. I suffer awful visions of a coming disaster and would do anything to prevent it. Ooh. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like if I don't become God. Ah, uh, okay. You know, if I don't become God, then then everyone will die. It's gonna be a problem. What's your flaw? This How is, is that gonna be a problem? This is a this is you a trickster. Said, god. No, it's gonna be a problem if you don't become God. Yeah, yeah, I'm, no, basically, yeah. I'm calling it right now. This whole thing is a trickster god. James, like, I invented the god, so can, it's not. Okay. <laughs> What's your flaw? Don't talk about okay. my god. Uh, and don't expect me to save those who can't save themselves. It's nature's way of the strongest thrive and the weak perish. Which is, you know, kind of true. And Logan, do you have Flizzly Mantras for yourself? Or Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we came back to that because I remembered a few things that I, um, that I, uh, that I figured out during the break because I am prepared. I <laughs> dab um, <laughs> on all the haters. Um, oh no, no. Dab on all the wolves. <laughs> Um, my personality trait is, um, is, is semi twofold. Um, personality trait is, I was in fact raised by wolves. And, um, uh, I watch over my friends as if they were a litter of newborn pups. The flaw is oh. I was raised by wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I do have nine charisma, with charisma's my lowest stat, so. 
classic. Um, it's a stinky hair. My guy. ideal, <laughs> my ideal um, is nature, um, being that the natural world is more important than all the constructs of civilization. So I kind of see him semi in like a Witcher role, as of like, yeah, that's right. He has a hatred of like the aberrant. Mm, so like yeah. things that are like, um, like, uh, like a beholder. Exactly. Like, um, what's the word? Aberrant. Aberrant, but abominations. Ah. He does not like. Um, he's like, me, I love these wolves and not these not wolves. Um, <laughs> in his, bo- in, in his bond, is he wants to put his family to rest. It, I'm going to say he's a firm belief in that, like, they're now, like, these marauding spirits and that perhaps they torture him somehow. Mm. Um, at least maybe he thinks that. Um, and his flaw is that there's no room for caution in a life lived to the fullest. There you go. Cool. <laughs> you all remind me of like Street Fighter. Oh! <laughs> Each of you. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the town of Ederby's Arch. So Ederby's Arch, are we? I guess we mentioned it before, but Ederby's Arch, small town, like less than a thousand people live there, um, and this is like on the frontier. So it's out. Ederby's Arch is on the Fool Song River, which nor- flows from south to north. I think like the Nile. North of town, it sort of delves deep into this twisting, complex canyon system. Um, and then, but to the south of town, it's it's relatively chill, right? It's like, there'll be 100-foot cliffs, but not 1,000-foot cliffs. Mm. Um, but out to the west of town is sort of scrub pine forests and, like, juniper forests. And, like, it, it starts to get a little bit more wet, a little bit more hilly, mm-hmm. and then it eventually leads up into the mountains. Um, the road going that direction to the west eventually leads to Earl. Right. Um, it's about a yeah. week's travel by horse. Mm. To the east is the desert. Oh. And <laughs> the road does go through the desert. You basically just like go east <laughs> over the sand. Um, and eventually, so traders do come through once a year, and they say that if you pack enough water with a two week journey, Oof. You can get to the other side, and there are mountains. And you can, like, on a very clear day, you can see them just like a purple mm. lumpiness in the distance. Cool. Mm. Um, and apparently there's wards up there or something like this. Ooh, I like those. Purple lumps. Mm. That was the first draft, Purple Lumpy Mount Majesty. <laughs> Purple <laughs> Lumpy <laughs> right. Mount. So the reason, the reason the town is called Ederby's Arch is because, well, so it's named after a fellow named Ederby who came a couple hundred years ago and like actually founded the town um, back when Earl was sort of at its, its height, the kingdom of Earl. Um, and the town is a, <clears throat> a big natural arch over the Full Song River. So the Full Song River is like a big river. It's pretty serious. Um, and so there's this giant natural arch, and that's what the town is built around and in cool. some cases mm-hmm. on. Wow. Was this like a, the interstate will surely go through here situation? Yeah, basically. Okay. Uh... Did it pay off? Mm. Welcome to Earl City. <laughs> okay. huge. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's, like, there definitely is some trade. Like, there's enough for there to be a town there, and there's, you know, there's some mining and some farming and a lot of, like, livestock, so cattle and sheep. Uh-huh. Um, goats do at least decently well. Um, so in the in the winter, you sort of gaze them out on the, the, the dry lands, and then you move them up into the mountains in the summer. Um... But not a whole lot. Like, it's a pretty sleepy town, pretty uh, out of the way, if you're from somewhere like Earl, which is like a big metropolis mm-hmm. way far away. Um, so that is our setting. And when I say desert, I mean, like, desert, desert. Mm-hmm. desert. Like, think southwest United States. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, like, red sand that gets everywhere and sudden sheer thousand-foot drops into, like, maze-like labyrinthine mm-hmm. systems of canyons. Nope. Um, nope. And enormous, yep, yep. like... Yeah sandstone monuments that just project into the air out of the surface of the desert nice. from nowhere. You know, think, like Coyote and Roadrunner, basically, is your mm, yeah. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. I was yeah. two steps away from it. <laughs> um, so the other thing you'll find in the desert are ruins. There are lots of ruins all around. Um, some of them are explored, most of them are not, and they range from anything from uh, like a random temple or like dwellings here and there to it said that there's a city out there somewhere, wow. an ancient where city that these, used to be. Where are these from? So in the last thousand years, any of you who are familiar with geography or geology um, nope. would know that a mountain range has sort of pushed itself up. So these are 
like the continuation of the mountain range that separates us from Earl um, has sort of pushed itself up and s- sort of Did it dry separated. Out so like this place has always been arid, but now it's like like, like rain, rain shroud kind of deal. Yeah. Ah, so there's okay. so in the last, let's say like three or four thousand years, um, it is dried up, and so there used to be like a a race of like sun loving elves who lived out here, um, and. A thousand or fifteen hundred years ago, somewhere in that time period, they like packed up and moved on mm-hmm. and left their shit behind them because it's you know big stone buildings. Um, so you'll find stuff out in the desert. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Time to pillage. Elf treasure. <laughs> we got family heirlooms. So you're mm. sitting around, presumably in the guild hall or whatever the monster hunters organization does, mm-hmm. wherever you have your. Oh, we didn't make a name. Oh, you didn't think mm. about it. Yeah, did Names you? are hard. All right, well, we can hold off on, on until later. Should it be some sort of food-related pun? <clears throat> I mean, I feel like it's got to be. I'll, I'll think of some things. Thanks, like Will! I, I can't think of food-related puns for some reason. All right. James, you're letting us down. Dang. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. there is in this world. <laughs> okay, so you're sitting around in the clubhouse. Um... And there is a knock at the door. Let's uh, go open it. All right. <clears throat> so you see, it's sort of late afternoon, um, and you see before you a traveler, a stranger. You don't get a whole lot of strangers in Atterbury's Arch. If there's less than a thousand people, it turns out everybody knows everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, this is definitely a stranger, and he's got two other strangers with him. There are three strangers total. Um, but the one in front is clearly in charge. He's a <clears throat> tall, thin fellow, um, and he's got, like, beautifully manicured facial hair, um, and, like, a, a very nice, like, haircut, and it's very, it's, like, slick back. Um, he's tall and thin, salt and pepper hair, um, and you, you can immediately peg this man as sort of a city slicker. Like, he's definitely not from mm. right here. Um, he also looks rich. Mm. And he says, excuse me, I am... Viscount Zoctavir, ex-checker of Earl. Is this the Monster Hunters Guild of Edeby's Arch? Sure is, pal. How can we help you? I have a contract for you. Yeah? So I'm back in the back, like, shuffling papers around. I'm st- you're, in, you're, in, you're in front of the door? Yeah. I'm, like, right behind you, not moving. <laughs> contract, huh? Uh... Sure, sure, yeah. Come on in. Let's uh, let's get you a seat. Uh, you want something to drink? We got water and cactus juice. And anybody who's looking at me sees that I have a variety of these like drawings, like really, really articulate drawings of these of these horrendous monsters, and I'm like sorting through them and like making mm, marks and mm, notes mm. on each individual page. <laughs> do, do, do some of them have like scribblings from me on them? Yeah, their color yes. and I'll, and I'll, I'll get really annoyed whenever I see that. I, think, I, okay. I do I recommend think. the cactus juice. It's the quenchiest. I would recommend against the cactus juice. It is a narcotic. No, 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 no. It I'll, tastes I'll... spiky. <laughs> That's so, true. So Viscount Dr. Beer um, strolls in, and he's sort of like, he looks juice. like he's, he's used to any place he is, he literally owns. Um... And he pulls out a, a chair at the, ta- at the head, of course, of the table, um, and sits down, and he pulls a, a flask from his hip and uncorks it, and, I don't know, produces a glass from somewhere. You're not really actually sure where this glass yeah. came from, but he produces it, and he pours into the in the glass. And... Is it like a, a shitty magic item where it's just like a ring, and he shakes it, and it's a glass? <laughs> so, those of you who are skilled in the arcane ways, which is probably just you. Oh! Um, I have the arcana skill if I can roll it. Oh. I got an 11. So I'm looking for, like, actual spellcasting talent nope. here. Okay. Um, so I'm not even going to make you roll. Um, okay. You can, like, this guy has an aura of magic about him. He's a big deal. He, well, he's maybe not a big deal, oh, but he's, he's definitely magic. got some, like, some magical cool, abilities. Cool, cool, cool. Can you, like, taste the magic <laughs> off of him, or, like... Uh, no. Yeah, I did send in the other game where I'm a ca- uh, caster. So yeah. yeah, I taste this. You one. Taste yeah. it. All right. I guess I was sort of. Was I mean, that? that'll work. Or is, it, or is well, well, I don't know. So I was sort of imagining it's like the uh, the, the spidey no. senses, like the yeah. electricians who put little magnets in their fingers and then they can like ah. you just like, like you get like a I get it. I'm like, a vague 
Yeah. <clears throat> like, this this guy has some magical abilities. So, so he's, like, he's pouring his own drink? Yeah, he pours a little bit of scotch and he says, if you have cups, uh, I'm happy to share. It is only the finest... Uh... And then he rattles off some pedigree of, <laughs> of fancy scotch or whiskey or whatever, and you none of you have any idea. Well, you might. Uh, I, I probably know what it is. Yeah, but I, in, it's good stuff. Since I know what it is, I push a cup forward. Okay. <clears throat> Pours a little net for you. I'm still working on my mug of cactus juice. I'll just, yeah. I'll just put this here. I have like a small gourd on my side and then like open it and I have like long fingernails and like my fingers are kind of like stained black like up to the top knuckle <laughs> and I slowly uncork it and I like pour it out into like a small bowl and it's like black liquid. <laughs> You must, I just hold it up and I just start... You must forgive my compatriots. They're a little eccentric, but they get the job done. I smile and, like, you see my, my gums are, like, black. I was hoping you were going to say you just pour dust out of it and then pour more liquid. <laughs> pour dust out? Yeah, that's the dusty old gum. Well, I, I certainly understand it is so hard to find good talent, and true talent must be allowed its eccentricity, must it not? Regardless, I have contract for you. I have news, tidings also. When was the last caravan you had from the direction of Earth? Uh, what was it? <laughs> so it's... Do we, all do, do we all do like that? <laughs> oh no, this is... Oh, this, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, oh, you know, I actually haven't been there that long. When was the last caravan? Well, that's why I'm laughing. Yeah, we... <laughs> uh, they don't really uh, come out here. Yeah, what? so it's it's also... So you would have a, what like, at least do? yearly a caravan would go through. Um, but it is while, right? it is spring, and Seven. the caravan has not come yet this year. Oh, no. It has been many moons since any caravans made their way out here. So, Earl, my friends, is in a state of war. Mm. Oh. We have been attacked, and we have held them off through the winter. The campaigns of the summer are soon to begin, but we must cast an eye to the future. We must develop what natural resources exist throughout the realm. And so I, as the exchequer of Earl, mm. have been entrusted with the task of establishing industry in this uh, this area. Really? So you, you want to come out here and zazz us up, huh? We're not good enough for the capital. But why would like. you ask a group of monster hunters? To destroy the desert? Well, you see, there are a number of uh, locations. Natural resources have been produced in abundance by this this wonderful world upon which we sit, and yet many are guarded by fearsome beasts. And so I come to you with a proposal. To clear the brush. Well, uh... (laughs) What are we, what are we, uh... Well, what kind of creatures? I mean, we definitely have an idea of the area, but... We can absolutely handle them, whatever it is. Well, uh, let's not be too hasty here. Look, we haven't failed yet. Yeah, that's never a good indicator of future performance. I step step in front of a long, like, notched, like, wall. (laughs) (laughs) Like, he thinks it's, like, successful missions, and you're like, I'm the one for the death count. Yeah, it's like skulls. (laughs) So what are we talking? So... We will, I will, <clears throat> let us call this one a, uh, a trial, right? An opportunity for you to prove your merit. I uh, have, of course, heard of the, heard tales of the Monster Hunters Guild out here in Edderby's Arch, but it never hurts to be sure, you know. Businessman must be somewhat savvy. And so <laughs> your first target will be a manticore. So mm. I'm like shuffling through my papers. I get to a drawing of a manticore. Yeah, yeah, so how, find one. how common are is actual? I mean, yeah, we are a monster hunters go Like, would we just you know like mm-hmm. manticore? Yeah, yeah, you know. know what a manticore is. Oh, yeah. Um, and in fact, you know probably of the manticore that he's talking about. Mm. Um, so there's a manticore, oh, a little mm. spiky. Yeah, <laughs> we've been meaning to take yeah. care of him out for a yeah. while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not too terribly far, maybe 50, 60 miles to the south of here. Um, is a like a manticore, like a single manticore has made their domain. Um, a manticore's territory can be quite large, as you know. Because um, they're aerial hunters, yeah, right? Yeah, they're aerial hunters. They mm. have, so a manticore is um, the face of a human, the body of a lion, the wings of a bat, and the tail of a scorpion. Um, 
They shoot poison spikes. They're real nasty. Uh, Scary stuff. Be lots of fun. A disgusting abomination. So, um, this one, you're not sure exactly where it's layers, but you know it's like three or four days right to the south of here. It's out in the, like, it's the southeast of here. So it's out in the actual deserty part of the mm -hmm. desert. Um, it looks like fate is on your side, Viscount. I'll take the job. What about the rest of you? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Always. Very well. And he reaches down to his side and pulls out a purse and jangles it and tosses it on the table. I like that. It's, it seems like a pretty reasonable sum. Um, <clears throat> I'll, reach, says, I'll reach forward and like pull it close and like open the bag. Yeah. There are 200 crowns. Consider that your down payment. The other half will be yours when you can return with the beast's... Well, some trophy or another. I'm sure you'll figure something out. Are you tail. both and I like disinterested? I want to put that tail on this that's wall. Right. Yeah. I mean, as long as we clear <laughs> the poison out of it, I guess that's a viable... We can extract the poison for future missions. That makes sense. <laughs> and cactus yeah. juice. <laughs> All, and cactus do a little spike in it. All parts of the manicure, as the adage goes. Okay, but let's let's actually work on focus on killing. We the could thing also first. use it to build our own immunity. Smart. That I like is, your that style. That does not work. It's a great idea. That is not at all how that works. I will have no part of the manicure. Really? Because I'm pretty sure. It's, I'm pretty sure flames. That for you did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> flames ignited my flames, so poison's probably going to help my poison. That doesn't... Why would that correlate? Why would that correlate at all? He has a point. And soon we'll have to. Does he points. not understand how, like, immunity works? He's 16. No. Why? Did you understand what? how immunity worked when you were 16? And also oh, no, not him. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I definitely understand how things Just work. don't want to risk it. Okay. Are you, are you like, half my Got size? It, it might so also like, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, I'm a little guy. <laughs> doesn't work like that. But. So another also thing... Also not fully developed. <laughs> ...that you all know about... You know, like, you've been sort of keeping tabs on this manicure because, you know, you want to pay attention to it. It's mm -hmm. not... So this manicure, it's like... Like, every once in a while it takes some livestock, but it doesn't really kill humans. Is mm -hmm. it a situation where it's like, eh, no contract, no no big deal? No business. Probably. Yeah, it yeah, it hasn't really made a nuisance of itself. It's pretty far from but like no people no, are. But is no one willing to pay to get rid of it? Because yeah, it's not basically. that big of a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so... It's not dragged off a chat yet. Yeah. The other thing you know about this manticore... <laughs> well... <laughs> that's what that's really serious. <laughs> a couple of years ago... Um, so this manticore is a female... Okay. And a couple years ago, a male was spotted in the area. Um, the males, of course, are solitary. They, like, fly around, basically, like, fly in, bang, and leave. Mm -hmm. um, but the females will stick around and raise pups. Um, <laughs> so if Puppies. there was a male in the area a few years ago, there's a good chance that there are young ones. Uh-oh. Sweet. So it's going to be more than just one, probably. Yep. We're going to slaughter a whole manticore family. All right. Well, we brought you along for all those notes. What do you got in there about manticores? What can you tell us? Uh, well... Uh, Nothing we, can, we can't find out in the field. Oh, yeah. You're the new one, right? Let, let, let me consult my actual books for a second. I'll like, reach down into my pack and pull out a couple of different like small folios and start flipping through Is them. there an angry face drawn on the manticore <laughs> from me? Yes. <laughs> Any drawings that you've made to my notes, I haven't been confident enough to bring up to you yet. <laughs> Here, why don't you draw okay. this? So, oh, go ahead manticore? and uh, roll... This would be nature, I believe. Sweet. Manticore is a more or less natural beast. Works for me. And you've done, like, a fair bit of preparation on basically everything in your book, right? Yeah. Like, it's not just, like, some random thing. It's, like, this is... If it's on the list, I've, you know. I've worked Okay, with roll with advantage. I mean, we... Okay, sweet. I mean, we can... We can not say that. Thanks. No, take the bonus. There you go. I want to go in prepared. So that's going to be a 16. That's okay. not bad. Cool. So, that is enough to know. Um, so, of course, all the things that I've said so far. <laughs> it's a mean cat face, everybody. It's a manticore. It's a mean man manticore face. Manticam. And it's like the idea of him in the corner, and you're like, hey, hey! And you, you come in and find Stop him. Stop it! And I'm like, you start grabbing Yeah, and then I go on all fours whenever you find him. <laughs> Your nails are too long, yeah. they like slide on the floor, and you just try to get away. Okay. Anyway. So, other things you know about manticores, um, in addition to the, like, bat wings and scorpion tail, um, are that they are moderately intelligent. So think like int seven. Um, mm. So like a like a <laughs> like a ten year old. Well, so they they ha they have a human head. Do they speak common? Yeah. Yes, they speak wow. common. Um, and they are 
traditionally known as being cruel and dishonest. Okay. Um, so they try, they'll try and trick you. They'll try and yeah. like, they're jerks. Do I know enough about the poison Checks. and their tail spikes? Um, not with the sixteen. You know. Okay. Especially not if you had advantage. Um, you <laughs> do know that manticores are both strongly attracted to and strongly resistant to magic. Gotcha. Um, so, a, like a strong magical aura is, or like a place with a strong magical residue is a place that they're likely to make their lair. Hey, Viscount, <laughs> want to go on a little hunting party? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that their territory can be up to a 20 mile radius. Um, and that the pups, like a few year old pups, are going to be probably about the size of a like a large dog. Um, okay. And that they'll probably stay in the lair most of the time. Like a manticore gets up to the size of, I mean, big. Yeah. Um, you know, we're talking like basically, like think like a large bear. Okay. Like a big old grizzly bear size or even Small bigger. Small right. car, like a Volkswagen bug, like an original one. More like an SUV. Okay. Really? Yeah. As big. Bears big. aren't that big. Like a grizzly bear? They can get big. Gets up big to like, as big as an SUV. Grizzly bear on the hind legs <laughs> is like a solid 12 foot tall. But he's not talking the, like literally like the wheels correlate Filling with... the volume of a car. Yeah. We're not talking this. We're talking this. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if theory holds true, SpongeBob memes work everywhere. <laughs> we, we should uh, <laughs> prep and head out. Uh, hmm. Well... It sounds like going down, right? I mean, about to. Yeah, it's also like it'll yeah, probably prep. be a well, few days yeah, ride. Sleeping is prepping. There. So the the nearest settlement to any of that, there's a, a cabin out there, mm-hmm. an old uh, old Yarwick <clears throat> is a, a like a sheep herder, and that's where he sort of has his home base. So would he know me at all as um as a nomad and? Yeah, he'd probably know you. I mean, you you all have oh, been through that. there before. Like, everybody knows who okay. you all are. So, hold on. Do I... So, I don't know that the tail spikes actually have venom, venom in them. You know that they have venom. You don't know, like, what the venom does. So, if I wanted to use my poisoner's kit to make an anti-venom... You'd have to wait. Is that something feasible? Hmm. You would... You're just, just going gonna, to gonna, gonna think okay. and let me wait till I get poisoned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You ever sucked out poison? Because you're about to. <laughs> I, I don't feel very good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I've got... I'm going to spend some cash to buy some more rations. Uh, how much are rations in Edderby's Arch? Uh, don't worry about it. Like, at fifth level, you have enough money that, like, little things yeah, like a, a knight. Oh, okay. So we don't care. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, in that case, then I'm fully prepared. I mean, I got my burglar's pack and all that junk, so I'm good with that. <laughs> I've got my innate abilities as a dragon sorcerer. I don't need anything else. You're you're right. Yes, yes. You've so got magic. So from from we've re- we've received a telepathic communication over the Slack from Will. And Will, could you could you explain what you think a good name for us is? Oh, well, oh. I'll keep sending names. <laughs> oh, that's oh, what okay. you were trying to tell me. I was me. trying to get you to go on Slack and not I'm sorry. distract from your session. I'm like sorry. Rude... Sorry, no, no, I think it's great, which is why I wanted to pause oh, it and say. I, I said, He's got a good one. Said, it is good. The very beast. Uh, the very beast. So you're like the very best? <laughs> like, like, like above the door? I, I like want to be the very beast <laughs> like no one ever was. Yeah. The to be- eat them is my true test. <laughs> to cook them is my cause. <laughs> Or the beast around. The beast, yeah. The beast around. The beast around. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an idea. <laughs> Take the monster guts, reduce them down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep coming up with ideas if you want me to. I'm, yes. I, keep them coming, keep them coming. I'll put it on Slack so I don't interject. Thank you. Right. Okay. We'll, we'll just let them interject when it comes up. Okay. Slack me, I'll get them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm.